This is Andy Shapers with Acuity. In this video, I'll go through the new mirror operation command that's part of NXCAM version 11.1. We've certainly had a mirror capability in the transport command for many years, but our new mirror operation command has some new functions which we'll go through today. Before I get into the mirror operation command itself, let's look at what's already been created in this file. We've got a program with several operations running just on this left side part. And then if we go to the geometry view, we'll see that we have a setup on the right side with the mirrored part. But let's look carefully at this. Uh, we, although you see the part there, it's not actually been assigned as a part uh, here in our workpiece. That's not required for the mirror operation to function. We do have a blank, um, and we can use that to look at uh, a resulting IPW. And finally, we've got the MCS for the right-hand side, and that will be used when we post-process our output. Okay, let's begin um, with just a single operation. I'll right-click, and the new command is right here. We right-click on object, and don't go into transform. It's right here at the top, mirror. Next, I want to go through the two options that are available in the path settings. Uh, to begin with, we're going to explore the use uh, of the command with uh, neither box checked. And we're going to see that that closely emulates the function of the previous mirror function that we had in transform. OK, let's specify this plane. And in this case, I'll choose the um, XZ plane. Uh, which puts us right between the middle of those two parts. <coughs> now we'll choose Show Result. And uh, we see, again, without either of the options checked, uh, we do have basically a true mirror of the operation here. So uh, where this left side was starting in this area and then completing down here, we start over here and zigzag our way down. So th this would be conventional cutting, which is not what we want. And this was one of the, the big limitations of our other command. All right, let's undo the result. And we'll check the maintain cut direction only and choose show result again. And what we see is that uh, where we were starting here previously, now we're actually starting down here and working our way across, zigzagging up. So uh, we are now climb cutting, but um, you know, this may not be exactly what we want. So let's undo the result again. And this time we'll choose both boxes uh, and maintain the cut angle as well. And we'll do show result. And this time then uh, we're probably getting the result that we'd be looking for. We are starting in exactly the same place relative to the other part and then zigzagging our way down. Now there was one other option or combination that was available there, and that would be to uncheck maintain cut direction, but leave the maintain cut angle selected. Uh, we'll just see what that does, and uh, you know, again, it does uh, uh, give us a result that we probably don't want, uh, where we're starting down at the bottom, but now we're conventional cutting again. Okay, so we'll uh, leave both of those checked uh, most of the time when we're working with these types of operations. And uh, an important result, I'm going to actually cancel here and go look at the operation. Uh, an important thing to consider is when you are setting up your cut direction, you're probably going to want to use a vector for your cut angle. Uh, that w This as opposed to automatic um, with vector or actually one of the other options here, anything except automatic, um, the algorithm has something specific to grab onto while it's computing the direction for the other side. So just anything except automatic is going to give you the most consistent results. Now let's go back and mirror those first two operations. I'll keep both boxes checked. 
I will be careful though to switch so that the operations get dropped into program right and I do want to use the MCS right for my output. We'll hit show result just to double check that that looks good. And we'll click OK. Note that once those are created, uh, I've got an extra column turned on here in my program view. It's the dependencies. And here I can see, uh, if I use the tooltips, that uh, other objects are dependent. And of course, it's the, the mirrored operations down here. This is telling us that uh, an associativity is being created between these operations and the parents up above. Let's go to the program right now. And we'll use uh, work piece, show 3D. And what that does is tell us what that's going to look like as, as a result of running those two mirrored operations. Now, you can't use the verify and things like that that are inside the operations. You can use that blank, though, as I just showed you, to show the resulting in-process work piece or show 3D. Next, let's mirror this uh, final operation. Using the same settings for the plane, the program, and the geometry. But we're going to uncheck both boxes. And because those boxes are unchecked, uh, this operation is, in fact, conventional cutting here. You can see the lead-in move to the left. If I double-click on the operation, though, and go into the cutting parameters, In the strategy, it uh, indicates that it's climb cutting, but we just saw that it's not. So when we mirror these operations, we aren't necessarily updating all of these uh, things that you see in the operation parameters. So you'll just need to visually look at that when you have a mirrored operation. And of course, the big tip is you see uh, here in the path that it's mirrored, and here you see the dependencies. Okay, that's our new mirror operation command, and it is available in NXCAM 11.1. .1.